All right, guys, so it's Monday. I'm recording this on a Monday. I'm going to try to get it out same day so you can have the podcast episodes at the beginning of the week and you can just, you know, consume it as you want throughout the week. But usually the news cycle is pretty slow over the weekend. And aside from my, you know, terrible brunch experience, a bunch of weird shit happened this weekend that I'm going to try to cover all of it today on this podcast. We're going to talk about girl math and how it's gone to new lows. Uh, This liberal woman accidentally said the quiet part out loud. She admits that liberals want to control people by race, and she's not talking about white people, spoiler alert, but that's gonna get way too spicy for YouTube. So if you wanna see that segment, uh, then please click the link in the description below and uh, watch the full podcast over on Patreon. We're gonna talk about the second assassination attempt on our former president, Donald Trump. Uh, That's right, not one, but two attempted assassinations on him and the uh boy the the news cycle it's they're they're like wrap it up we don't want to talk about it let's keep it rolling the dude that did it unhinged lefty we're gonna talk about that fire fest 2 is being announced and um they've already sold a bunch of tickets apparently and guess what kind of seems like they didn't learn their lesson the first time because uh they don't have any talent for the festival. If you don't know what I'm talking about, don't worry, we're gonna break it down in this podcast. And more confirmed reporting of immigrants eating domesticated animals on US soil. Another thing that the left-wing media is trying so hard to cover up, but we're gonna talk about it today on the Everything is Gay podcast. Let's get in the palate cleanse. Fire Festival 2 is happening April 25th. Uh, of 2025, so we're seven and a half months away. We have a private island off the coast of Mexico in the Caribbean. Have the conversations at least begun with any musical acts? We haven't booked any talent for Fire 2. It's not going to be just music. For example, Karate Combat, we're in talks with them to set up a pit to have like live fights at Fire Festival 2. McFarland says he's already sold 100 tickets at $500 a piece, and packages will go on sale ranging from $1,400 to $1.1 million. What do you get for $1.1 million? Yeah, so you will be on a boat. You'll be scuba diving with me. You'll be bouncing around to other islands and other countries on small planes. You believe someone will pay $1.1 million for a Fire Festival 2 experience? So we put applications for the million dollar ticket uh, up a few months ago. We had over 100 people apply. All right, so some of you guys might not know what the fuck this is. Like, what is Fire Festival? What is Fire Festival 2? Who's this smarmy dude bragging about ticket prices? Um, it's hilarious. It's frustrating. It's insane. And it's like the perfect example of influencer media just... At its worst, there's, I believe, on Netflix, a documentary, and it's hilarious. Um, Watch the documentary because (laughs) you just got to wonder who wanted to go to this in the first place and, like, how is this dude still allowed to do this again? So, for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, Firefest took place April 2017. It was supposed to be, like, a luxurious, uh, all-inclusive music festival in the Bahamas, but it ended up like a complete disaster okay expecting a party this guy took all of his drugs on the flight over he's the only one having any fun everyone else is grumpy because it's been five hours and there's no food in lieu of food staff decide to start handing out tons of free tequila this only exacerbates problems once the food does arrive it's just as delectable as promised though gourmet craft single there a few hours later, bags arrive on a shipping container. It was getting dark and there was no lighting. So everybody's walking around with their cell phones trying to look for their, their luggage. Oh Plenty of people had their luggage stolen. But don't worry, if you have any valuables, the festival advertised top-notch security. Here it is. But no one told guests they had to provide their own lock. There are rumors of muggings by the locals. I heard rumors of feral dogs. A tent supposedly caught fire. The closest beach has a rampant shark problem. Staff don't have any uniforms or walkie-talkies, so no one knows who's in charge, and the people who are in charge can't talk to each other. Here's the bathroom. Many staff quit after only a couple of hours. For the few customers who are willing to just make the most of it and enjoy the music, they had some bad news too. All of the major musical acts pulled out. There was massive legal fallout, so that guy, that dude that was talking in that clip, Billy McFarland, um, he was convicted of fraud and sentenced to six years 
in prison. Um, and then the cultural impact of this is that, like, <laughs> again, it's like a perfect microcosm of people wanting to show up because something sounds cool, but not doing the research and putting themselves in an ultimately potentially dangerous situation. And it sounds like he's not changing much because I get it. He's trying to sell the tickets up front so that he can have capital to entice potential performers. But I think he tried to do that the first time around and it got him six years. If he gets fucked for a second time, they're going to put him away for life. All right, and now to the meat and potatoes. All right, so in the meat and potatoes section today, I want to talk about girl math. And if you Google girl math, a bunch of oh, so relatable, cutesy little examples will show up like, oh, my wife, you know, she'll spend 60 bucks online and then spend $500 more to get free shipping. And then it's like, hey, honey, I saved $5 of shipping. It's like I got it for free. See, <laughs> girl math. Oh my God, that's so cute. But you know what? I think we laughed about it for too long. Okay, we've called it cute for long enough and now it's gone off the rails because it went from women being like, oops, I spent extra money to get free shipping, hee <laughs> hee, I'm so silly, I don't know how to balance a checkbook, all the way to white liberal women publicly posting things online using this dark arithmetic to admit that they want to control people based upon race. And I'm not fudging numbers here, all right? Now, if you wanna talk about this with me, you're gonna have to go over to the Patreon because if I post this, YouTube will flag it and I will get yet another strike. But I do wanna share with you this. <laughs> Okay, so here's an example of girl math gone wrong. Um, this chick is, is pretend, oh my God, I figured something out today. Today I learned, oh my God, you guys are gonna be blown away. I'm so smart. Look at this problem I've just solved. When you find out that society is built around a man's hormone cycle, 24 hours, while women have 28 to 31 day hormone cycles. All right, um, you know who you're gonna have to take this up with? God. Because hear me out, I'm the time teller, all right? All I do is uh, study time pieces and play with watches, and I have a pretty good understanding of, you know, time as it passes. Not because, you know, I'm some crazy, like, theoretical physicist or something like that. It's because I literally watch clocks as they go around, and I'm always playing with time-telling devices. And I can tell you that, you know what, actually, let's Google this. How long for the Earth to rotate? The Earth takes approximately 24 hours to complete one rotation on its axis. Wow! You don't even need a wristwatch to figure that out. You Just Google it. Just use your phone. You already probably use your phone to tell the time. So Google it. Ask Siri how long a day is and they will tell you 24 hours because of the Earth's rotation. Not because of some crazy patriarchal chauvinistic plot to use time against women's hormone cycles. This is fucking insane, okay? And this woman kind of exposed herself as not only being stupid, but being, again, a narcissist, all right? She thinks that, like, days, like the actual rotation of the Earth, should be based around her should be based around a woman's hormone cycle. We should base everything around a woman's hormones. When in reality, it's much larger than us on a singular level. You see, there's this thing called the sun, and there's these things called planets. All the planets rotate around this thing called the sun, and then those things rotate by themselves on an axis. Depending on where we are, on that overall orbit and where we are on that rotation, we will then experience different times of day and different climates and different temperatures, different seasons. But no, this stupid Karen thinks that all of us need to base our society around a woman's hormone cycle and the fact that the earth takes 24 hours to spin on itself was just some devious plot that a man thought up. But okay, she's a retard. Let's go talk about another stupid bitch that is just blatantly racist and she tries to use numbers to back it up. You're gonna have to see this on Patreon though because YouTube will not like it. All right, all right, all right. Now listen up, all right. Last week I asked you guys to give me your money on Patreon because I needed it. The truth is I don't. I don't need it, but I deserve it. 
I deserve your money, all your pennies, all your nickels, all your dimes, all your dollars, all your shekels. You gotta give it to me, and the way you do it is by supporting me on Patreon. It's the least you could do. Every year, I get made fun of for not celebrating Christmas properly. Every year, people ask me if I'm friends with Adam Sandler. Every year, people ask if they can come down to the tunnels and hang out, and the truth is, you can. You can come hang out whenever you want, but you gotta chip in. You gotta support us on Patreon so we can keep buying all of the lockers, all the gelt, all the gefelte fish, all the goodie bags. It costs money, and it's not cheap, so if you want this segment that I've cut out here, then you gotta go on Patreon. All right, God bless. All right, that's giving me a tummy ache. Let's get into the tummy ache section. So there was yet another assassination attempt on Donald Trump. Very scary and not cool at all. The New York Post reports uh, it was this dude. What a fucking idiot. Now, the deeper we look at this guy, uh, what's his name? Ryan Wesley Ruth, 2010 mugshot. Wow, this guy was a winner. We realize he's just some unhinged lefty. In fact, check out this update from two hours ago. FBI tipped off in 2019 about suspected Trump gunman Ryan Wesley Ruth possessing a firearm. Interesting. It's almost like all of these shooters have been on law enforcement radars to a pretty high extent for a very long time, and yet they're still able to perpetrate these acts. It's like someone's pulling strings here and maybe they just want it to happen. I don't know though. Now this alleged shooter's Twitter profile is like filled with a bunch of pro-Democrat, anti-Trump bullshit. We can see him here standing in front of a bunch of flags, but what's interesting is uh, the image doesn't really pick it up as well. Uh, in fact, I'm going to make myself smaller here. You can see one half of his hair is yellow and the other half is blue. This guy was an insane freak for Ukraine, all right? Like, insane. And with the lefty media for the last, I don't know, like, million years talking about how Trump is a Russian puppet, you know, Ukraine at war with Russia, uh, this dude, who's clearly a fucking real retard, unhinged psycho is like, well, now I got to kill Trump because apparently he's a Russian agent. Jewish Uncensored reports, uh, and again, Jewish Uncensored, they're my bros, of course, just some Jewish tunnel digging propaganda. Um, he is from, let's see, North Carolina. He's 58 years old. He has a social media history filled with attempts to recruit individuals to join conflicts in Ukraine, Taiwan, and anti-Israel sentiments. So what's hilarious about this guy also is that he's posted like maps of Palestine because of course like when Britain owned that area they called it Palestine now on the passports from that era when it was called Palestine say land of Israel in Hebrew so it's like that um that kind of you know pisses off all these people because they're like no it says Palestine yeah, but then in Hebrew under it, it says land of Israel. So it's like, oh my God, oh my God. But yeah, I guess this total nut job showed up to where Trump was going to golf with an SKS, which is a uh, Soviet, like old, like proto AK, essentially. I own a Norinco uh, SKS. Um, awesome gun, shoots 7.62.39. So it's, it's, you know, it shoots the AK round, but it came out you know, before the AK. Anyway, I guess he had some backpacks filled with ceramic plates or some tiles to act as ceramic plates. I assume he was going to put one on in front and one on in back. But of course, once he got engaged by Secret Service, the dude bolted. So he wasn't really prepared for a fight after all. Now, what's interesting is apparently he also had a GoPro uh, that they found. So he was going to try to film himself doing it, which is he's just a fucking idiot. But what's nuts to me is that, you know, there's been two verified attempts on Trump's life. If this happened to Biden or Kamala or anyone on the left, this would be wall to wall coverage talking about how Republicans are divisive, are dangerous. They want to hurt our leaders. They want to kill people. They're out for blood. But all you hear is that type of rhetoric from the left right? So who really is the most dangerous? Because the only thing they can talk about is uh, January 6th, right? But they forget about what happened June 2020, where like 
all of the American cities were on fire and people were getting killed and livelihoods were getting destroyed. That was way, way worse than anything that happened on the Capitol. So I don't know, I, like, I hope this stops happening. I don't want political violence. I don't want violence, period. It's just very interesting how it's only happening to one person and it's only happening from one side. Now I wanna share with you this, okay? This is from Christopher Rufo. And again, this kind of goes into the whole Trump topic. People were very up in arms during the last debate where it was essentially a three on one, you know, ABC hosts one and two, and Kamala versus Trump and there's some arguments and uh, you know concerns that maybe she was fed the questions beforehand and maybe she was wearing an earpiece I don't really care about any of this because she did objectively just a terrible job and I covered that uh, on another episode on this channel if you want to watch that I'll link it in the description below but everyone was really upset when Trump was talking about how they're eating the dogs they're eating the dogs, the Haitian immigrants, they're coming into our towns, they're eating our dogs, I know it, you know it, the dogs know it, I wish they didn't, but they do, dogs have a better memory than you think, dogs man best friend, also apparently tastes good, Chinese people do it, but you know now, it's mostly Haitians. Well check out this video clip, um, it's going viral, it's kind of funny, but also not, as someone who owns a dog and three cats, I can tell you that, um, you know, I get it. Some people get really upset when, when people are like, oh, my babies, my fur babies. But the truth is, regardless of what you want to call them, I get it in the Bible. It says God gave us dominion over animals. Um, but they are a, an integral part of your family, right? I mean, um, even people that use animals uh, on the farm, that use them as livestock, uh, you still respect them. You still treat them with dignity and you uh, are very gracious and grateful for them. Whether you use them for food to help you uh, tend the fields or uh, just as a companion and, and, and someone that brings you joy throughout your day-to-day -day life. Um, believe me, my animals are not working animals. Uh, in fact, I work for them because I have to feed my cats and if I don't feed them, they wake me up in the middle of the night. And then Hachi, our dog, you know, um, if we don't give him attention constantly, uh, he, well, he, he has no understanding of personal space. Okay. So you sit down, if he wants your attention, he will be on your lap immediately. And he is not small. He's like 30 pounds. But what I'm trying to say is I'm an animal lover and the thought of someone taking our domesticated animals, killing them, butchering them and eating them, that's not okay. And it's not part of our culture, and whether you like it or not, we have standards in a civilized society. But check out this video. Oh, what is this they got on the grill? Is that, did they kiss the cat? They man, to, listen, they man. Too. They're going cat right there. His ass better get missing, man. Look like his homies on the grill, man. What the fuck? Okay, so I know what you're thinking. How convenient this video is coming up right now. Um, it's just a bunch of right-wing propaganda. We're trying to make the immigrants all look bad, right? Well, Christopher Rufo has reported and confirmed, verified with the original poster of that video, that this is from a year ago, all right? This is filmed long before Trump ever brought this up during the debate. And what do you know? This video clip is out of... Ohio, but the left-wing media is doing their damnedest trying to say this is inaccurate, this is all just propaganda, this is a lie, because it looks like chicken. And even if it wasn't chicken, even if it was cats, it wasn't dogs like Donald Trump said during the debate, and hey, that might be Ohio, but it's not Springfield, uh, that's Dayton, Ohio, 30 minutes away, and uh, ends up, that's not a Haitian immigrant that was grilling those animals up. Ends up, it's a Congonese person from Congo. So, all of those things combined means that Trump was wrong. Fuck you, bitch. Dayton, Ohio, where this video clip comes from, is 30 minutes away from Springfield, where all the Haitians are. And yeah, the person grilling these alleged cats might be from Congo, which obviously isn't Haiti, but it's still a first world developing nation. And dude, the point is, doesn't matter if the immigrants are from Haiti, doesn't matter if they're from fucking France. If you are rounding up our domesticated animals, butchering them and killing them, it is not okay. 
We are not okay with these people from different cultures with different standards of what is okay to come here and change our way of life in a very detrimental, shocking, and scarring and permanent way. Christopher Rufo reports, We spoke to the author of the video who asked to remain not anonymous, excuse me, confirmed its time, location, and authenticity. He told us that he was picking up his son last summer when he noticed the unusual situation. It was some Africans that stay right next door to my kid's mother, he said. This African dude next door had the damn cat on the grill. We then identified the home by matching it to the visuals in the video and cross-referencing them with the eyewitness. We knocked on the door of the first unit, a family answered, telling us they were from the Democratic Republic of Congo and that all of the surrounding units were occupied by other African immigrants. Interesting. One of the residents told us that her former neighbors, also from Africa, had lived in the adjacent unit until last month. They had a blue grill and the father would find meat in the neighborhood. Her dad was going to find meat, she said. Her dad was going holding a knife. The current residents also showed us a blue grill of the same make and model as in the video, which the former neighbors had abandoned after they moved out. There were at least 10 cats wandering around the complex, and another resident complained that they were breeding on the property. So they were breeding the cats on the property to harvest them for food. That's not normal in America. I'm sorry. So I live in Springfield. There's the water tower. Um, a lot of people are asking what's really going on here. And I can tell you that three years ago, we had a very large population of stray cats and now they are gone. You don't see any cats. Um, our visitors are kind of violent, you know, and you'll see them threatening people. They've threatened my family with machetes. Wow. Uh, it's not a safe place. Um, most of the stuff that the people are saying to City Hall are true. Uh, if you put two and two together, you can figure some stuff out. Um, but it's definitely not somewhere you want to be. But the left-wing media and all the people in power, even the local government here, the police stations, they're saying, no, 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 this is all overblown. It's just propaganda. It's just right-wing lies. But we are seeing it time and time again from people on the ground that actually live in these locations saying, my dog was decapitated. My cat has disappeared. They're fucking grilling the cats in this neighborhood. This is not normal. So who are you going to trust? The authorities? The people in power? Who have their vested interest in making sure that this problem they've created is not being proliferated in the media? Or the citizens and residents who actually live here saying, my town is getting fucked up. It looks like I live in a fucking third world country. It's not safe. It's not a place you want to be. My animals are fucking missing. That is terrifying. So I'm going to keep tabs on this story as it unfolds. I'm sure I'm going to make a video just dedicated about this because, again, I'm a pet owner. Uh, I'm an animal lover. I'm a, res a responsible meat eater. I'm perfectly fine eating meat. Dude, I eat literally a pound of ground beef a day, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm not joking. I'm fucking dude. Oh yeah. But I'm not okay with eating cats and fucking dogs. This is America. We have standards, Ugh. but okay guys, that, that literally made my tummy ache. That's fucking disgusting. What we spoke about. Let's go ahead and uh, please enjoy some dessert. I'm going to turn off the audio because um, that might get us flagged with the song in the background, but it's so adorable. This male sparrow is uh, stealing some crumbs off this uh, little cafe goers plate and feeding his wife. It's so it, it, it's just so cute and you can see he actually doesn't eat anything He's just breaking pieces off and feeding her feeding her feeding her and it's just I don't know It's this stuff as bad as it gets here with the human experience It's stuff like this that gives me hope and 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 makes me feel happy And so that's why I'm definitely putting it in the uh, dessert section and then anime girl of the day You know, we got to finish it up with this uh, Misato from Evangelion, or Evangelion, however you want to pronounce it, one of my favorite animes ever, uh, kind of a mind fuck, but easier to understand than Akira, so if you want something that's fun, action-y, and somewhat accessible, um, definitely check out, uh, Neon Genesis Evangelion, um, awesome, and she, she's been my waifu forever, shout out, uh, to Wakey Waifu, I guess they make merch with, with hot anime chicks, shout out to them, um, Misato, 
please become real when Donald Trump becomes president again. Either way, everything is gay. <laughs>